Hi guys, today I'm going to be building this MiG-29 AES with this very nice CloudCam digital camo. So this is Academy's 148th scale MiG-29 AES um, and it's in the markings of the Slovak Air Force. This is a slightly older kit, I think it's from 2011. The main thing which attracted me to it is the nice digital camo pattern. I've been wanting to do an aircraft like this for a while. And you can see the decals here to represent that camo. I won't show you what else is in the box because it's fairly standard stuff. So let's get straight on with the build. The upper cockpit comes in one piece and there are a couple of options. The first is whether to have these air intakes open or closed. This is the open position. And I went for this in the end because if you look at the closed position, the detail really just doesn't lay nice there. So I much prefer the open position, although it would be nice if there were actual holes in the open vents. Now the only place where the kit really gave me big fit issues were these two pieces that are the underside of the cockpit and they just don't quite line up properly. Because they're quite a complex curve you can get the left and the right edges aligned but then the top of the curves are out or you get the top of the curves aligned but then the side is out. Um, they really just didn't fit very well and they needed lots of fitting, lots of sanding later on as well. Equally the nose, the nose wasn't terrible, but also the fit did need a little bit of sanding there as well. The engine intakes, as well as having quite large um, injector marks on the inside of them also didn't fit very very well together and because of this two-part design it's actually quite hard to uh, get rid of the seam on the inside of those putting the little um, fan piece here at the back does help a little bit because it helps to align things but still it's quite difficult 
Now it's possible to model these intakes closed or open, but if you look at the piece that's used to keep them closed, it just really lacks anything that, that makes it stand out. It's a little bit dull, it's not a great fit, and it doesn't have a lot of detail, so I decided to leave that off and leave these intakes open. Probably the hardest part of the kit for me was getting these engine nozzles cut off from the screws. As you can see here, the attachment points are really, really thick, especially here on this uh, inner part. Like we're talking about almost 10 mil of uh, connection point there. It's really, really hard to get these off without bending or damaging the plastic. And, and in fact, I couldn't do that. I ended up, uh, I ended up damaging some of the nozzles. So the filler I've started using recently is this Vallejo plastic putty um, and I really really like it. It goes down really well, it's not too thick and the great thing is once you've left it to dry for a while you can wipe the excess away with a little bit of water or damp tissue and it just wipes away easily. The kit includes attachment points for three different types of missiles. I did build them up and paint them, but then actually I decided that I much prefer the look of the aircraft with just the um, attachment points, just the pylons in place uh, and no weapons. So it was the camo scheme which attracted me to this uh, model in the first place. And looking at the decals, they're really, really large. So I was very interested to see how they went down. Luckily they're printed by Cartograph and they're really, really good. Although I do think, looking at this um, reference photo here, I do think that darkest grey is not quite right. However, the decals were really, really thin. And they went down really, really nicely.
perhaps the only slight difficulty was here uh, because of the slightly complex curves of the engines it was a little bit harder to get them to lay down well but again once they dried out once the mark set actually did its job uh, they went down pretty well as you can see here So towards the front of the aircraft there's also some digital camo on either side of the cockpit but both of these decals go over these open vents and to be honest I can't really see how I would get them in there. I'd have to really cut up the decals and, and probably end up making a large mess of it. So basically I decided just to simply cut around the decals and, and just have them go around uh, the vents. I know that's not 100% accurate but I think it looks better than it would do. Equally on the sort of spine of the aircraft, the camo has to go around this part here. It would be helpful actually if the instructions said put it on later, but they didn't. So I just cut the decals around. Once a gloss coat was down on top of the decals, I used Tamiya's black panel liner and then just a brush dampened with enamel thinner to remove any excess. I also sprayed some very thin brown and some very thin clear blue over the engine nozzles to give some heat discoloration. And here is the final model. So the result on this one is not the best kit I've ever built. Uh, it was quite challenging to get the fit and the shape correct around the cockpit, on the underside especially. But having said that, I'm fairly happy with the way the kit turned out. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this build video. If you did and you haven't subscribed already, then please do consider hitting the subscribe button below. And I hope to see you in the next video where I will be making a large update to the HK 132nd scale Lancaster. So until next time, thank you very much for watching.